You're standing in the electronics department looking at a camera lens that you might want to buy. The lens description looks like alphabet soup, or maybe a secret code? AFS? 105mm? F2.8? What do all those letters and numbers mean? I'm Cheryl with Focus Camera. In this video, I'm going to go through the basics for Nikon, so when you go shopping for a lens, you can buy with confidence. Now, if you need more than the basics, be sure to check out the resources in the description below. There you will find this chart that I created with a list of abbreviations for Nikon and third-party manufacturers like Tamron, Sigma, and Tokina. You can download this and lots of other cool content. Beginners often wonder, are lenses universal? The short answer is no, and in an upcoming video, I will go into this in some more detail. But for now, what you need to know when it comes to Nikon is that they build their lenses for basically two categories, crop sensor or full frame, and two types of autofocus drive systems, lenses with built-in focus motors and those without. In the lens description, the letters that designate the lens type almost always come first in the lens description. AFS or AFP, AFI, and AF are related to the autofocus drive system type. AFS, AFP, AFI are lenses with focus motors inside the lenses. AF lenses have no focus motor in the lens. Focus relies on the camera body to have its own autofocus motor. Professional level and full frame camera bodies typically have this type of motor inside the camera body. If your camera body is a consumer model, crop sensor model, or older model camera, you will probably need to purchase AFS or similar lenses to get autofocus and all the full functions to work. Nikon has a detailed compatibility chart on their website, and I have included a link to it in the description below. Elsewhere on the lens or in the lens's formal description will be the letters that signify crop sensor or full frame. Crop sensor lenses are DX lenses. Full frame lenses are FX lenses. The FX may not always be noted on the lens, but it should be in the lens description. If you don't see an FX or a DX on the side of the lens, then it is most likely an FX lens. DX lenses are less expensive and lighter in weight, while FX lenses are more professional and have a better build quality. FX lenses are therefore more expensive. Lenses with gold rings are Nikon's version of luxury lenses. Other lens types include Z and S lenses. Z lenses are for the Z6 and Z7 mirrorless, and S lenses are their superior line. You need to know the type of lens so you will know if it's compatible with your camera and whether you will have a crop factor with that lens. For example, these images of a nearby pond show a 50 millimeter full frame lens on a full frame camera, and then that same lens on a crop sensor camera. Notice how much of the image gets cropped or cut off? On a crop sensor camera, a 50 millimeter lens gives an angle of view that's closer to 80 millimeters. You may need to read up on this a little bit to better understand. There are some links in the description below. The next set of letters and numbers we need to understand are the focal length. Focal length is measured in millimeters. This number is the distance between the camera's sensor and the lens's convergence or focus point. It is not the actual measurement of the length of the lens. The focal length tells us how much of our scene will be captured, basically our angle of view. Short focal lengths have wider angles of view, whereas longer focal lengths have a smaller angle of view and a higher level of magnification. In other words, a 400 millimeter lens will bring a smaller area of the scene closer to you than an 18 millimeter lens. Different focal lengths are better for different types of photography, so understanding the difference between a 35mm and a 300mm is important. You will want to choose lenses that are the appropriate focal length for what you're photographing. Some lenses will have just one number, such as 105mm. This is a fixed focal length, which is called a prime lens. When you see a range of numbers, such as 18 to 55 millimeters or 55 to 200 millimeters, it means the focal length is variable or it has a zoom. A zoom lens allows you to switch between focal lengths so you can shoot different subjects in different scenarios without changing lenses as often. 
If you want more in-depth information about focal lengths and the differences between wide angle, standard, and telephoto lenses, there is a link in the description. The next set of letters and numbers is typically the aperture or aperture range indicated by the letter F and then some numbers such as F slash 1.8. Sometimes the F and the slash are not included and you will see the series of numbers in a ratio like 1 colon 1.8 instead. Aperture is the opening that lets the light in and it can be set to be open and wide or closed and narrow. The numbers on your lens indicate the widest possible aperture for that lens. And understanding the maximum aperture on a lens is also important because wider apertures allow more creative control over the depth of field and also make photography and lower light conditions easier. If the camera lens is a prime lens, meaning it has one set focal length like 50 millimeters and no zoom to it, there will be just one F number on the lens. That is the maximum or widest aperture the lens is capable of using. If the camera is a zoom, it usually has a range such as f4 to f5.6. This is a variable aperture and it tells you the maximum apertures at the shortest and longest focal lengths. These numbers may also appear with the f, without the f, or as a ratio. With variable aperture, the more you zoom, the narrower the aperture becomes. There are some zoom lenses that have fixed apertures. These will be more expensive. Now on to some other markings. As a general rule, additional letters usually mean a better lens. Like this example, the lens is considered a luxury lens and has image stabilization as well as a wider maximum aperture. However, it might also give you sticker shock. Now, as I said, in general, more letters are usually better, but not if those letters are indicating a crop sensor lens. In this case, the additional letters like a Nikon DX indicates that this is a lens for a crop sensor camera. Some lenses and camera bodies might also have Roman numerals like two and three to indicate the generation of the camera body or lens. A lens with a three is newer and probably has some upgrades compared to the same lens generation two. However, be aware that some manufacturers may use similar markings for other purposes. Tamron lenses marked DI2 indicate that it's a crop sensor lens and DI3 lenses are specifically for mirrorless. As I've already explained, you will see the abbreviations for either AF for autofocus from inside the camera or AFS, AFP, or AFI, which have focus motors inside the lens. The S, P, and I stand for the silent wave motor, the stepper motor, or integrated motor. The silent wave motor is a very quiet, high-speed autofocus. NIC or C or SIC stand for Nikon or Super Integrated Coatings. ED is for extra low dispersion glass and HRI is for high refractive index. N is for nanocrystal and FL is for fluorite. These are all improvements to the glass elements or coatings that reduce ghosting and flaring and minimize aberrations. HRI is used on very high-end lenses and the N lenses are labeled in gold. The letters G and E on a Nikon lens are related to the aperture and this is another area where you will want to check Nikon's website for compatibility. IF focusing is focusing that's accomplished from an internal mechanism so the lens length does not change. Micro is Nikon's version of macro and VR is vibration reduction, and it's basically image stabilization that's built into the lens. Don't try to memorize all those letters. Download a copy of our abbreviations guide. Lenses may have markings for macro or magnification, such as a number followed by an X, such as 4X. Macro might also be marked as a ratio, such as 1 colon 1. Don't confuse this with your aperture, which is listed with the focal length. True macro allows the photographer to focus up close and get a life-size reproduction or larger on the image sensor. Macro lenses will often say macro on the lens, but be cautious. The label macro is sometimes used on lenses that do not really produce a true macro 1-1 ratio. Another element that might be confusing is the lens cap filter size, which is sometimes also listed in millimeters. Don't confuse it with your focal length that's part of the lens description. The lens cap and filter size will be listed either on the front of the lens or on the back of the lens cap. It's usually marked with a single number with MM 
or just the number along with a circle and a slash through it. Now you may also notice on your lens a group of markings, lines, or numbers. Sometimes these numbers are inside a little window. These numbers can be found on a variety of different lenses, and some of these numbers are found on zoom lenses, and they show you which focal length your zoom is set at. For example, from 18 millimeter to 35 millimeter. Some of these markings are to show you distances. These are mostly for landscape photography, and they're meant to help you figure out the closest and farthest points of focus, your front and back limits of your depth of field, at different apertures. The infinity marking may also be located on your lens. If you're interested in knowing more about these markings or more about depth of field, infinity focus, or hyperfocal distance, I've included some links in the description. Some lenses may also include a small series of other distance numbers on the side or end of the lens. These numbers indicate your minimum and maximum focus distances. Your minimum focus distance is the closest that you can get to an object and still have the lens be able to get clear focus on that subject. Even with all of those letters and numbers explained, there may still be a mind-boggling amount of remaining letters to decipher. Don't try to memorize those. Use the chart in the description below the video and download a copy to keep. So what is the takeaway? Understanding the lens type, whether it's AF or AFS or DX or FX, the focal length and the aperture are fairly critical and you should practice learning and memorizing what those mean and how they affect your photography. My lens buying tips would be that whenever possible, save up for better lenses. And what this means is one, try to buy full frame or FX lenses. You can use them on your crop sensor camera body for now with a crop factor. And later, when you upgrade to a full frame DSLR or mirrorless, you can continue to use them at their maximum potential. This can save you from having to repurchase lenses later on. Two, buy lenses with the focus motor in the lens, such as AFS, so that you get the most compatibility across different camera bodies. Three, carefully choose your focal lengths that fit your photography genre and style. Remember, each focal length has certain subjects that they work best with. Primes are usually better, crisper lenses, but zooms are more versatile. So whether you get a prime or a zoom is up to your shooting style. Four, buy fixed aperture lenses when you buy a zoom lens, meaning it has a low F number and it keeps that throughout the zoom instead of a range. And five, if your budget allows, buy lenses with the widest apertures. Not everyone can afford these options. A fixed aperture zoom costs more than a variable zoom. So keep in mind, for example, the difference between f1.8 and f1.4 may not make much difference for a beginner or amateur photographer, and that higher quality might not be the most important determining factor. So always take your shooting style and personal preferences as well as your budget into account. Buying a lens can be confusing, but by doing your research, checking the specs, and knowing a few key abbreviations, you'll be able to buy camera glass with confidence. If you want to test out your understanding, check out the mini quiz in the description below and see if you've got it. I hope you learned something from this video. Please consider subscribing to our channel and click here or here for more videos from the Focused Camera channel. Thanks for watching.